Okay, good morning guys and uh, again welcome to my uh, channel. This is your Prof. Zeus and for this afternoon we are still in the shareholders equity section. We will discuss about quasi reorganization. Now, what is quasi reorganization? From the term quasi para kang reorganize, diba? <coughs> Now, this is available for companies no, with huge deficit. Because remember, kapag ikaw ay mayroong malaking deficit, then no one would like to you know, invest in your company. So, um, in order for the company to be given a fresh start, then they can undergo the quasi organization. But this has to be, but the company has to inform the SEC that they will be undertaking such reorganization. Now, there are two ways on how you can um, you can have this quasi-reorganization. Number one is, of course, uh, re uh, revaluation, okay? Using the revaluation model, <clears throat> as we have already discussed, okay? We will be creating a revaluation surplus, okay? And this revaluation surplus will be the one that we will offset against the deficit. That's one. So, when we speak of revaluation, assets will be you know, stated at current value, including liabilities and, uh, and the likes, no? And the other one is through recapitalization. Now, with regard to recapitalization, it is actually changing either the par value, no, of the shares from, say, for example, uh, from 100 pesos to 10 pesos per share. Now, if the company will do this, then they will create an additional paid-in capital or share premium. Now, we will now offset the share premium. This will be used to offset the deficit. So, with this, after undertaking quasi organization, the company's uh, deficit will be equal to zero. Okay? So, there's no more deficit, but there's no uh, retained earnings as well, no? Because remember, uh, we are helping um, companies, okay, uh, in order for them to be able to, you know, uh, get back into their feet so that, uh, you know, people will invest in the company and that will give them a fresh uh, working capital requirement, okay, fresh funds for working capital requirement. That's how it is. Again, Intermediate Accounting 2019 Edition Volume 3 uh, by... Professor Nita Robles and of course uh, Dr. Patricia Impleo. Okay, let's have this uh, three dash, uh, two dash twenty seven. So in two dash twenty seven, so Red Ink has experienced several poor earnings and has several assets on its books that are undervalued. In its de it desires to revalue its assets and eliminate the deficit. At December 31, 2020, the company owns the following identifiable assets. So they have the inventory, the land, building, machinery, accumulate the book value, and then the fair value. And they have a deficit of $2 million. So we are going to prepare the journal entries to be affected, no? Journal entries to be affected in the books in order for them to, uh, to have a fresh start, okay? So number one, inventory. So inventory, if you would notice, there's a drop in the value of the inventory, okay? So what will be our entry? Debit retained earnings. So if you would notice, it's an additional deficit, no? For 300,000. And credit your inventory for 300,000. Okay. Number two. Okay, land. Land has a value of 5 million. And then it was increased to one point to six point five. Okay, now you've learned in our um, revaluation or under the revaluation. So we have the cost. Okay, and then the revalued amount. And of course, the difference is your revaluation surplus. Let's do the table. Okay, for land, the cost is five million. And then the revalued amount is 6.5. Or there's an increase in the value by 1,500,000. Right? And then for the building, building that 7.5. Okay, there's a cost of 7.5 million. 
and then accumulated depreciation of 3.5 therefore the book value is 4 million which is this one okay now according to the appraisal report okay the value is 5 million okay so if you will try to uh, so with this one okay, so the increase of the revaluation surplus is actually 1 million and this is how many percent increase 1 million divided by 4 that's 25 so there's a 25 percent increase we will increase this by 25 and also this one by 25 so that's going to be 7.5 million increase this by 1.25 so this is 9 million 375,000 and the 3.5 should also be increased by 1.25 so this is 4 million 375 split the net is 5 million okay so we did that 9375 minus 7 million 500,000 so the, this is 1 million 875,000 and the, uh, the accumulated is minus 4375 so this is 875 that will give a net of 1 million okay so this is the first one for the building and then let's have the machinery and then the accumulated the position machinery's cost is 3.5 so this is 3 million 500,000 and the cumulative is 1,500,000 okay so a net of 2 million but according to the property appraisal report this is 2,200,000 or an increase of 200,000 okay so 200,000 divided by 2 million is it's 10 percent so there's a 10 percent increase will increase by 10 and also this one so 3.5 times 1.1 so this is 3 million 850,000 and then 1.5 times 1.1 this is 1 million 650,000 so that the net would be so yes 3850 that's 2.2 okay so therefore 3850 minus Three million five hundred thousand. This is three hundred fifty thousand, and then one fifty minus one point five. So one point five minus one six fifty. One hundred fifty. So there's a net increase of two hundred thousand. So let us do the engine now. Okay. So we will uh, we will now record all of these increases. No? So therefore, debit here, debit building. For how much? One million eight seventy-five. Okay, and then debit. So we're okay with this. Machinery. For how much? Machinery is debited for how much? Three fifty. And then accumulated depreciation is also increased for the building. For how much? 875,000. And then also the accumulated depreciation for the machinery is also increased for 150,000. So therefore, the revaluation surplus is how much? Okay, so the value 1,200 is 1 million plus 200, so 1 million 200,000. Okay. Let us check if the interest are uh, debit is equal to credit plus 350 minus 875 minus 150 1.2. So we're okay. And so, therefore, what are we going to do now? We're going to check on the balance of the retailer means okay, or the deficit. So we have here the deficit. So, we have there's a two, th 2 million pesos beginning balance, right? 2 million pesos, and then 
we charge to retained earnings 300,000 for the inventories. Okay, so we have how much? 2.3 million in terms of inventories. Okay, and then let us have the revaluation surplus. Okay, so revaluation surplus is how much? 1 million 200,000. So we have one million uh, twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. I know. There's still the land. Sorry, there's still the land. We forgot the one point five for the land. And then the valuation. So this is two point seven. Sorry, na kalimutan ko So two point seven. So we have two point seven in the revaluation, not one point. 1.2 and then the 1 million 500 for the land so this is 2 million 700,000 okay so remember the objective of the uh, quasi organization is to eliminate this deficit okay so what are we going to do we are now going to prepare the entry okay to accept the deficit against the revaluation surplus okay so debit revaluation surplus For how much? 2.3 million and credit your deficit for 2.3. So after we post this entries, so 2.3 million and then this is 2.3. We will have zero. So this is 2 million 300. So the deficit would be zero. And then in the revaluation surplus, we will still have a balance of 400,000. So in the statement of financial position after the revaluation, among the shareholders' equity items, you have the revaluation surplus. For 400,000. And of course, in the retained earnings, it's going to be zero okay so this is what will have will appear in the statement of financial position okay so i'll cut this discussion Muna, because i'd like to upload it at once okay so that you have something to to watch okay thank you bye bye